<laughs> hey everybody, I'm Mike. I'm Bob. Je m'appelle Daniel. I did the same joke twice. And that's poor French. <laughs> This is the Board Game Rundown, and today we are doing a Kickstarter preview for Charcuterie, the board game, a delectable game of appetizer arrangement. Third World Studio provided this prototype so that we could tell you our thoughts. This is a 20 to 30 minute game with I split, you choose mechanics, along with some set collecting, where we'll be doing some community scoring, along with some secret recipe scoring. Takes only about 20 to 30 minutes to play. We've got a separate video where you can see the full playthrough and we teach the game. I'll briefly go over the rules here and then we're gonna tell you our thoughts. So uh, in Charcuterie, we start by one player splitting the stack. In a three player game, which is what we played, you would draw nine tiles. That is three equal stacks for three players. And the person, the host, that is pulling those tiles out of the bag can split these however they want. So let's just say that's my arrangement there. It starts to the player to the left. Dan can take whichever stack he wants, place it on his board. Bob takes a stack, I take a stack. Then we put them on our board and arrange them, arrange them however we want. You can change your arrangement as many times as you want, okay? And we are each going to take turns being the host twice. At the end of two rounds, we score, okay? Um, so that's really all you need to know for the, the basic teach here. Again, look at our playthrough for the full rules. Um, and then we all score, again, based on these community recipes. So like, for example, mine says the fewer meat I collect, the more points I score. So obviously I'm gonna be taking as few of these sausage tiles as possible. Because if I have zero to two of them, I can score 15 at the end of the game. Uh, Dan, what did you have? Well, this was actually funny. We all had very similar ones yeah. this time. I, we should point out, I went through it, and there are plenty of different ones. We just so happen to all have the same strategy, because mine was, have the, the, the less bread I collect, the more points I get. Uh, yeah, and I had the, le the fewer broccoli or uh, vegetables that I collect. That was the carnivore. Yeah, so we all had the least of something. There's plenty more recipes over there to choose from. Um, also, we went with the basic uh, the basic scoring tiles. There's one for each type. So bread, cheese, dip, meat, veggies, fruit. There's one of each type. Now also, we've got the advanced ones or the gourmet ones where things get a little bit more specific. They say to start with these for your first game and then you can spice things up by adding those in. You can even mix and match those if you want. You can say, oh, we're just gonna use the advanced for the bread one or we'll use the advanced for the bread and the meat one and keep the basic ones for the other four. So you can choose your flavor, if you will. Ha <laughs> ha, it's a food reference. <laughs> All right, so we just played this uh, twice, actually, so now we can go ahead and give you our thoughts on the game. Dan, what did you think of Charcuterie? Uh, this was fun. I like games that are this short. I, I really like spatial games. Um, I do tend to prefer more thinky, and I don't think that this is necessarily that. It could be, but I don't think it wants to be. This is a game that wants to be that Light. fast 15, 20 minute game where you're you're looking at the options and you're not just like randomly grabbing like I did earlier as a joke, but like you are kind of just looking and being like, okay, that uh, that's probably more points. I'll take that one. You could sit here and math everything out, I think it would lessen the experience in a game like this. I don't think that's what it wants to be. Um, but obviously, it's a very attractive game. They do a good job here with making the art look very realistic. Uh, not only on all the food, which looks fantastic, but like, you know, the board itself, the cutting board and everything, the, the charcuterie board. Um, they are all just very well designed to look realistic. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that makes the game not only attractive, but have a really good table presence. P people are going to be seeing this from a distance, and I could see people thinking from a distance it's real um, because they did such a good job with the art obviously once you get you know close enough yeah you can tell it's chits um, but uh, overall this was really fun I, I am really looking forward to trying the gourmet stuff because I think that while this is a perfectly adequate game that th this is not like a dumbed down version this still felt like I was trying to solve a puzzle and figure this stuff out you know I am really looking forward to having the very specific stuff of saying like instead of saying you know for each adjacent cheese and vegetable there's stuff in there that says like for every hummus directly adjacent to a cheese or something right having that very specific things or having groups of only a meat 
a dip and a bread, right? Like a group of just those together. Uh, like having that kind of specificity, I think is gonna really up the, the fun here while still being a quick grabbing game. Again, by, by changing the difficulty slightly on those cards, doesn't mean you have to then spend 10 minutes on your grabbing. It's still just looking and being like, oh, okay, well, I kind of want that. I'm going to go with that, you know? Um, obviously, I Split You Choose uh, is just a very fun mechanic. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a way to create a draft that you are more personally invested in. You are having to think about, I really need this cheese. I know that Bob wants bread, so I'll make sure this cheese isn't with the bread because Bob's going to want to take that and I really need this cheese and like just kind of creating that. And again, that's another part of the game that I think is really well done where you could spend 30 minutes trying to make the perfect group. Don't do that. <laughs> no, please. Don't, don't be that guy. But also, it's it doesn't the game does not feel necessary for it. You just look and you go, like when I was doing it, you'll see in the playthrough, you know, um, I was just saying, okay, these two I want together. So that'll be in a group, which means these two must not be with that. So I'll make that. Okay, I now have my three groups started. Uh, these two I don't want together, so they'll go in those separate ones. And then these three I'll just split up evenly. And that takes like 10 seconds to do that, you know? But there is thought going into that. I am looking at it and saying, okay, these need to be the other, these don't need to be in there. And the groups almost create themselves as you're kind of, you know, figuring out your own personal puzzle while you're doing that. And there is some looking around once you get, uh, if, you, if you're looking around and you're seeing like, man, Bob's board's looking really good, then you can take a couple extra seconds making sure, okay, I know Bob's gonna want this if he sees it. <laughs> and so I'll do this. Uh, but like, I don't know. So there's a lot of interesting thinking going in in a package where the thinking is happening so fast that it doesn't matter. And I like that kind of stuff. So overall, uh, very happy with this. And I, I would recommend this to a lot of people. I also really like something I don't see super often um, is the round structure of the game. Uh, Sheriff of Nottingham does it mm -hmm. to where basically it just says uh, each person plays as the main host, you know, X amount of times, and then the game ends. Uh, it means you know exactly how long you're going to be playing the game. You know exactly how many turns you're going to be in control of what's happening. Uh, you know exactly, like in Sheriff, you know exactly how many times you're going to get bribed. So in this game, you know exactly how many times you're going to be creating the charcuterie, charcuterie board and everything. I think that, again, takes a game and it makes it this stinky game while still playing in 20 minutes. All that is just very good decisions to make a really fun game. Bob. Uh, well he said. Sorry, well Bob. said, Dan. Yeah, said? I mean, uh, excellent job, Dan. Pretty much took all my talking points. Thanks a lot. Um, but I'm a big fan of the uh, I split you choose. I think that's one of the best ways to get like the fairest stacks, right? Because if you're the last person to take what's left over, you're gonna try to make sure that's as balanced as possible to make sure that you're not the one getting screwed, right? And uh, so I'm a big fan of that mechanic, and like a lot of games, does it a good job here. Um, I was to say when you go to pull your tiles out, just try to grab a handful. Don't don't try to like okay that one feels like a strawberry, that one feels like a cheese. Just just pull a handful out, drop them down, count how many you have. Right, like it, that'd be like the biggest thing I have about that is just be careful about people playing with people who might want to try to mm -hmm. do that kind of. You know, I, I even again it depends on who you're playing with, but like the first time we played the game, there was one time that I pulled out like twelve tiles in accident. I said I don't care, I'll just put these three randomly back in. Like yeah. just don't put a lot of thought into it. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then like, like I said, splitting them up, making sure like you know okay I wanted I knew that at the end I was like. Well, he's already got one of those, so he's not going to want to take that. He's got that, so I'm going to make sure I have that separate. Ooh, but I want this fruit, so we make sure I have other piles that are enticing to each of the other players, and, and that's fun. I, I enjoy doing that. Um, yeah, these other cards look really good. It'll be nice to see uh, what happens when we get those, uh, try those out. But, no, it's a fun little quick uh, set collecting kind of aerial uh, area manipulation type of game. So it was fun. Yeah, I want to highlight real quickly, we're going to have plenty of B-roll on this, but I just want to highlight this art because I am absolutely blown away by the water coloring that is done here. This is photorealism at its best. Uh, and I'm sorry, I don't know if it's Hola or Jola Sopek, but your water coloring art is fantastic here. Like these crackers, I, I'm about like, I'm getting hungry. I'm, I'm about <laughs> to eat these crackers. The strawberries, the tomatoes, pepperoni. I mean, mm. yeah, the pepperoni, like this meat rose. Like, I mean, look at the actual depth of that. It looks like a 3D image to me. 
uh, the the different breads. Blackberries. I'm just those blackberries are absolutely nice. blown away. The tomatoes. I already talked about those. I mean, there are so many amazing pieces of art. This entire game, including the box, all of the components are watercolors, and that just is extremely impressive to me. It's the first. It's the first thing you notice. It stands out. Like I'm just sitting here looking at the little individual pieces as I'm playing. Like, is that real? Like seriously, it looks awesome. So I just wanted to really highlight how incredible this art is. But all of that art just improves what's a really fun light -like game. Um, I really appreciate how much thought you have to put into creating those stacks um, because you are. There's plenty of player action with that because I like how you got to pay attention what other people are pulling. Like, you know, if for each unique veggie in a group of veggies, if Bob's got a group of four veggies over there, the last thing I'm going to do is give him one or two more different style of veggies. So that's just the type of uh, decisions that you're making in this game. And I find it really fulfilling for a quick, light game like this. Um, I really feel like this is one that I, I would find myself bringing to the holidays and like showing family members and people that don't play a whole lot of games like something like this would easily bring right. people into the Good hobby game. yeah like wow games can look and play like this and not be hard to learn and be done in 30 minutes yeah this is this is what you're in for. Uh, I think it's fantastic. So I actually believe on the New 52 podcast recently, they interviewed the artist and showed off some of the art and stuff as well. I, I don't remember exactly, but check out that channel if you're interested, because I believe that they kind of talk about this a bit. Nice. They have. They definitely have. Um, but yeah, um, they really kind of knocked it out of the park with this production value and uh, how much depth of gameplay is compared to the actual rule set. This is really easy to learn, but there are really interesting, thoughtful decisions that you make every time you're splitting a stack or choosing a stack and arranging it on your board. There's a, a lot of factors here you have to consider when you're making those arrangements on your board. So I can just really appreciate the depth here compared to how easy it is to learn. So uh, very impressed with that. Anything else, guys? No. Uh, we'll have a link in the description to anything that might show you guys off this, like the, the crowdfunding page and everything. So just let us know if you guys from this video or from the page itself are interested as well because um, this was fun. Yeah, and this is already 100% funded. In fact, it's 700% funded, I believe. So uh, <laughs> multiples of funding. Uh, this is a prototype, so obviously things can change. This wonderful artwork will not. This, however, they've already met, met the stretch goal. This is a cheese bag now. Uh, so that's going to be kind of cool. They've only kind of shown bag made of cheeses. briefly <laughs> what that's going to look like. So I'm excited to see the, the cheese bag. I know that's silly. But I love it. I think it's great. Can't wait to see the it's cheese. It's like the leather face of cheeses. <laughs> as, as the king of cheese, <laughs> I approve this message. Yeah. So we all enjoyed this. Uh, you should check it out if you uh, like easy, palatable games. Oh, boy. Here we go. We will also, we did, uh, <laughs> as Mike might have mentioned earlier, I don't really listen when he talks. Try uh, we did a full playthrough as well of this game. So uh, there'll be a link up there when they're both available. Check out that if you want to see uh, this entire game played. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, when this video comes out, the campaign should still be live. So if you're interested in checking it out, please do. Mm -hmm. Thanks again, Third World Studios, for giving this prototype. It was awesome. For the board game rundown, I was Mike. Bob. Dan. See you next time.